Hello everyone, thank you for joining us on this edition of the 6pm primetime newscast on Ekinos Television live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Babla Jonathan. In our top stories in this edition of the news, Brigadier General Aga Robinson dismisses as fake news information that have been circulating saying that some individuals have put themselves together in a group to liberate Cameroon. You will hear the top military official in this edition of the 6 p.m. newscast on Ekinos Television. We are also going to take you to Idabato in the Bakasi Peninsula, southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon. There we are going to show you the ugly face of underdevelopment challenges plaguing that part of the crisis hit southwest region of Cameroon Staples. Ladies and gentlemen for joining us on this edition of the news on Ekinos Television. Brigadier General Aga Robinson has qualified as fake information that some elements constituted an armed group to liberate Cameroon. The top military official was speaking at the end of an offensive of Cameroonian army or the Cameroonian armed forces on the Cameroon-Nigeria border. For me, I'm The offensive launched against armed groups and bandits operating in Kunche along the Cameroon nigeria border in the Adama region took over three weeks according to General Aga Robinson of the 3rd military region who says information about the creation of an armed group to liberate Cameroon is fake. Uh, at the end of the first phase of it, we can say that what is uh, announced by the media and other social uh, media is completely uh, not true. The elements and the creation of the movement for the liberation of Cameroon is just a fabulation. We have therefore uh, secured the borders, and this operation, which has come to the first phase, will continue in other aspects of it. Another reason for the offensive on the frontier zone is to implement the recommendations of the United Nations following the assassination of five UN workers on that border territory in 2017, according to Colonel Njoka Domini. 31st of January 2017, five workers of the United Nations were assassinated by armed gunmen, three Nigerians, one Cameroon and one Kenyan. The United Nations imposed on two countries, that's the Cameroon and Nigeria, to implement strict uh, security measures before the continuation. And since then, the Cameroon army has been deployed in this frontier zone, same as the Nigerian army, because I'm talking right behind me is the Gashaka Gumti National Park. And uh, I think that the situation is under control. An exercise which also saw the employment of the civil military tactic. We have also contacted the other stakeholders in this operation, which are the motor taxi drivers. We have encouraged them and also vigilante groups here who work with our soldiers so that they, they become our permanent partners because we cannot win this war alone. And they will continue to work with our soldiers here to make sure the borders are secured. Located over 265 kilometers from Gaoundere, Concha and its surrounding localities like Pawati, Alme, Kashala and Vokti were all transformed into an ungovernable zone by armed individuals and kidnappers. The very bad state of the roads to Concha, the absence of bridges on subwater bodies along the way, all contributed in blocking the effective intervention of the army in cases in the area. The dry season permitted General Aga Robinson, General Lubaza and Colonel Joka Dominique to comb the area with their men. And the military is not only involved in fighting enemies and defending the territorial integrity of Cameroon, but it is also involved in what is known in military jargons as civil or military activities. And in this, uh, within this framework, the military helped to restore the site of 33 persons in Re Buba in the Mayori Division North region of the Republic of Cameroon's Manjikan Gebre report. 
There were over 300 inhabitants of Rebuba who turned out at the Rapid Intervention Military Base to get free consultation and treatment of their eyes. According to the representative of the Lamido of Rebuba, the population, the, Maori. the population is thanking the B administration and urge them to continue with such gestures. Initiative is in control of the man on the continue the third advantage. For several days in the Maori division, B officials received 350 persons and operated 33 of them with the eye disease called cataract. Donc cette opération comme ça vient également This operation is to make the population to know that we are together and we count on them as we fight against all forms of insecurity. The operation is to gain more confidence from the population. À laquelle nous faisons confiance et nous souhaitons également que nous fasse confiance et qu'elle continue de nous faire confiance pour qu'ensemble nous puissions mener cette la lutte. The operation dubbed B against blindness successfully reinstated the site of over 20 inhabitants of Ray Buba. Thanks for me, I'm still send that for that report. Now we're taking you to Kupe uh, Maninguba. We are going over there to take a look at security measures that have been put in place to ensure a huge free celebration of end of year festivities and the security measures have been increased in order to ensure that the population are secured as they go about their activities and the celebration of any year festivities for those who will be celebrating within the difficult security context in the two English speaking regions of the Republic of Cameroon as a result of the four year long armed conflict there. It was in the Cameroon report. Barely a couple of days to Christmas and New Year celebrations, security checks stopped the Kupe Maninguba division of the restive southwest region. A new one of thing entering the various subdivisions, like Bangem for instance, undergoes a thorough search to filter dangerous greens. A result of a security meeting that held under the chairmanship of the senior divisional officer, grouping all divisional officers and the security officials. You know that uh, the end of year used to come with um, more insecurity, be going around to frustrate our populations. So we are here today to take uh, relevant measures to make sure that our population will uh, feast uh, this end of year uh, without any problem. We are instructed uh, patrols all over the division and we are, uh, police operation will be going on, will be reinforced to make sure that our, our population we pass uh, this end of year festivity each free. The locals attest there is a significant improvement in terms of security, hoping for each free end of year festivities. We really experience peace, we thank God for that. Everything is going well. But the parents are trying to try their best to buy us um, Christmas things. But even though things are not fine that way, but there's, no, there's not too much shooting around everywhere. People are moving freely. No, everything at least is very, very okay. Very, very, very normally as before. No matter how tough things are hindering them from buying food stuff for the end of year festivities, their greatest joy is that they can now freely move and go about their various activities as compared to when the Anglophone crisis escalated in 2017. <laughs> Would the one make it be more and more? Even though some people will not have Christmas dresses, but there will, some, there will be something to eat. But I'm waiting that God to bless Cameroon and the peace to return back. Traders and other hustlers are from they are maximizing some profits. Very good, very moderate. Yes, like the price and everything. At least all our, all, all our customers live here with satisfaction. 
yes, at least we, 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 are, we are very proud of ourselves. If security has been assured for a hitch free celebrations, the senior divisional officer orders the population of Kupe Manunguba to obligatorily wear face masks in public places and the entertainment sports in order not to give the COVID 19 pandemic a chance in the division. Idabato in the Bakasi Peninsula, southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon, one of the most enclaved parts of the country. And we are taking you there with our southwest correspondent, Derek Jato, who paints the picture of the locality hit by several underdevelopment challenges, including non supply or the absence of the supply of portable water. Derek Jato paints the story of Idabato. The population of Edabatu subdivision in the Bakasi Peninsula live at the mercy of nature when it comes to some basic needs, like potable water. These people here only have a sip of clean water when it rains, an attempt made by the Cameroon government has not driven home any victory. The dry season on this oil-rich and economic vibrant island is hell to many, as people turn to anything to quench their taste. To make matters worse, erosion is encroaching and very fast. Today, the municipal councillors drawn from the 29 communities that met up a Dabatu subdivision are sitting for a budget session. And with 440 million francs CFV adopted as the 2021 budget to May Etongo Efange, Mayor of the Edabato Council, the budget will be used to redress such burning issues. My priority project, we need to bridge to cross from Idabato 1 to Idabato 2. We need a boat, new boat and new engine. We need school and public toilet. But the main priority that we need in our project is sand filling and embankment. We cannot do otherwise. The one where states are provide for us. We have to take, give them to fix. A budget being merely a forecast for Wang Lawrence, the senior divisional officer for the Indian Division and the supervisory authority of councils in Indian Division challenge these councillors to work as a team for better realization of the budget. The budget the Lord Mayor has just presented is merely a focus, meaning that. It is not money kept somewhere. After this session, the councillors have to go back to their various quarters, mobilize everybody living within their various quarters on the needs to pay their global taxes. The estimated 50,000 inhabitants of Idabatu subdivision in this Bakasi Peninsula are hopefully waiting for practical response from the power that be for the expected changes. Councillors in the Kumba uh, putting hands on deck to ensure the development of their respective municipalities. This is what they were discussing during the last council sessions. We have details indicating that the councillors are determined to work despite the unstable socio-political and security situation while the city council is engaged in a battle to put an end to Operation Ghost Town imposed by pro-independence fighters within the context of the four-year-long crisis or better still armed conflict in the two English-speaking regions of the country. The grading of roads leading to several neighborhoods repairing of street lights which have been abandoned and the eventual opening of some drainages in Kumba, Meme Division have been placed as top priority projects by the city council as well as Kumba 1 and 3 councils in their budget recessions. For the city council, a budget of 2.2 billion francs CFA was voted by the councillors who were assisting in the first council session chaired by the newly elected city mayor, Grigory Mewanu. The session also resolved to finish up projects that are still lagging behind. Most importantly, the construction of the ceremonial ground, whose project came to an abrupt stop in Kumba 1, May. 
Moses Esembe and counselors say the provision of water to its inhabitants is amongst the earmarked projects for 2021. Meanwhile, Kumba 3 voted the sum of 700 billion francs CFA as their budget for 2021. The supply of electricity to its inhabitants is also another project they intend to carry out in 2021. Kumba inhabitants applauding the great initiatives of these municipal authorities they voted say their goals will be achieved only if peace returns to the Anglophone regions and Kumba in particular. Coming up for me, I'm Stone Sander takes a look at the problem of greenhouse gas emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. This is a problem that is persistent in the Republic of Cameroon caused by some factors including illegal logging and other human activities that go a long way to destroy the forest and favor emissions in the country. And the government with partners like the Worldwide Fund for Nature, WWF, are now strategizing and working out how to enhance efforts to reduce emissions of emissions from forest degradation and deforestation in the country. Details in this report. Cameroon's 19 million hectares of dense tropical forest is threatened by a combination of deforestation and forest degradation drivers. Land conversion for small-scale subsistence and market-based agriculture, conversion for agro-industry and plantations, mining, infrastructure development and on all types of logging schemes are weighing down on the country's forests. The average deforestation rate has been on the rise, including the loss of between 40,000 to 80,000 hectares of primary forest annually between 2015 and 2018. This contributes significantly to Cameroon's greenhouse gas emission from deforestation and forest degradation. The strives to reducing emission from deforestation and forest degradation, Red Plus has suffered setbacks that have mitigated results. The process has been ongoing for close to a decade. It has been adversely affected by organizational and governance problems. I think it's a matter of misunderstanding between the government and some key stakeholders. And uh, according to me, those constraints are going to be shift for the moment and the things are going to move in the, the right direction now, according to me. However, Cameroon's Forestry and Wildlife Minister, Jules Doreen Dungu, says the process is progressing and yielding some positive results. Meantime, he adds that government highly needs the private sector and the civil society to succeed. To the country director of the Worldwide Fund for Nature, the private sector is the live wire of the Red Plus process because the investment and respect of environmental measures are all responsibilities of private companies. And this is what they are discussing at a two-day workshop in Douala. We are uh, we playing a role of a facilitator. We are not the owner of the process. We are here to accompany and to support our uh, technical partner, the Ministry of Forestry and the Ministry of Environment, to ensure that with, with the participation of all other stakeholders, they move ahead and they are able to conclude this uh, important process of uh, Red Plus in Cameroon. As far as our means permit us to accompany the government, we are going to do it. Uh, government and other stakeholders involved in the red process in the country. The stakeholders are examining possibilities for private sector actions and existing commitments in favor of biodiversity conservation in view of reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. That's it for the first part of this edition of the News Talking Point. It's up next.
Mutaga Silvanus Tifu, one of the seven special advisors of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement CRM political party, is joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you immensely, Mr. Babda, Jonathan, and thanks to the very faithful viewers of uh, Equinox TV. And thanks a lot, especially for the effective job that has been done by the management of this TV channel to remain uh, a political all through these years of uh, st stiff work and criticism from the regime in place. All right, we want to share a little bit of your experience in prison before we get into um, issues that we'll be talking about in this edition of Talking Points. How was it your stay at the Kondengi Maximum Security Prison? Uh, Mr. Babila Jonathan, the Kondengi Central Prison was a place that I went through and uh, served my prison term there like one that was in an institution that he has to learn, uh, like a teacher that was out to teach, teach Cameroonians who've been there, maybe dumped in a place where they thought they were uh, taken there to be recycled, but it seemed as if they were just taken and dumped there to die. Uh, like I told you, in this Kondengi Center prison where I lived, I met uh, people. Several months you were there. I was there for over 23, uh, 22 months, close to 23 months in the Kondengi Central prison. Uh, the very first thing that caught my attention was this. Uh, reaching the Kondengi Central prison, I had to meet Mancho BBC that I only knew in 2016 during the Coffin Revol uh, Revolution. I met people like uh, uh, Penn Terence. Uh, of the English uh, speaking expression like myself. I met people like uh, one man that caught my attention was uh, is, is this guy uh, Pastor Levan Ayompe. Pastor Ayom uh, Levan Ayompe is one of those uh, prison what attracted you to him? Yes, one of those uh, uh, he was once a, a highway robber like I, I can call it, but when he entered the Koning prison uh, he was arrested by God and then from then he got transformed into an apostle. So he's been doing a very uh, mighty job in the Kondengi Central Prison because when I reached there, I asked myself, mm -hmm. so the prison, which is for some people a place where it's punishment for them could be a place where God takes some other people there to transform because he narrated his life to me, the way he lived his life while he was outside and the way God had to transform him in the prison. He's the one coordinating uh, the, the Bible lessons in the prison. He uh, educate young Cameroonians that enter the prison. In fact, he's doing a very wonderful job in the prison. And Not you, one of the people that uh, really caught attention. my attention. And, yes. you, and you were part of the, or you are still part of the prison ministry, and uh, you had a similar experience. Uh, with me, my own experience is purely different because I had a calling to be an, uh, an evangelist while outside but I didn't accept to indulge into full ministry. So when, when I entered into the Kondengi Central Prison, it was then, after having passed through uh, the guidance of uh, Pastor Levan Ayompe, and who is of the Soren Ministry, that is managed by Pastor Emmanuel, you find that I got transformed. I, got, I went closer to God, which they took me, opened my mind, and they taught me more about the Holy Scripture. So I think that's one of the things I can appreciate of the of my experience in the prison and that my passage in the prison permitted me also to be uh, a kind of a blessing to other people because they saw me as a politician of my caliber remember then i was the uh, deputy spokesperson of his excellency maurice Camto. so they could imagine that if a politician of my caliber is so close to god who's got tied then what more of ordinary prisoners so they were very attracted to the word of God, they came closer to the word of God and said, oh, if uh, one of the officials of the CRM is a God-fearing person and is so close to the president of the party, it means that the CRM should be a God-fearing party and that the CRM should be having a good project for the nation because, you see, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of wisdom, so the CRM can offer a better uh, future for this nation. That's see, many of those inmates of the prison got attracted to the CRM political party and they say, oh, if we have to be outside, we want to talk to our uh, uh, our family members, we want to talk to our peop uh, 
our tribesmen and other like to join the CRM and the, because we see the way you have been living your life in the prison. They see the way the, the, the President Mamadou Mota, His Majesty Bilal Efa, that was in prison with us because most often when our food came, we, we were not eating prison food. When our food comes, we will have to invite other prisoners to come and share with us. We didn't allow it to be shared only with prisoners of the CRM. So you can imagine it. It showed them that we did not only uh, we do not only preach living together, but we practice it. We we showed them that living together is not only by mouth, but by eating together. That is what living it, together uh, and eating together. together. And uh, earlier you said that uh, it was you like uh, the prison is a place where people are dumped to die. Why did you say that? Yes. How, how is it a place where people are dumped to die? Uh, Mr. Babla Jonathan, the conditions, the health conditions in the prison, that's uh, especially with regards to the, <coughs> the infirmary of the prison. I can tell you that I saw people who were my close friends. I'm talking of Thomas Tagem, who was arrested. He was one of those teachers at the uh, OIC in Kumba simply because they suspected that he could be useful to the uh, separatists in producing arms. He was arrested and dumped in the Kondagasita prison. He was part of the prison ministry. He was sick for a long time, and when he went to ask for permission to be taken out for medical um, uh, treatments, it was not done. Finally, when the situation degenerated, you found that he was taken to the hospital, back in the hospital, he was chained in the hospital, to, and then he died in chains in the hospital. I saw that prisoners died in the prison during the, the peak of the COVID-19, COVID excuse me. We did not know what really was the cause of the death that were recorded in prison because I saw not less than six, seven who died in front of me. So in the prison, so and then when you go to quarters like uh, maybe quarter eight or nine, you find exactly what happened there. Uh, happens there. Many of those street children that they pick them up, maybe because of uh, identity card, some of them maybe they stole pineapple, some of them stole maybe a bunch of plantain. They are dumped in the prison. They will be in prison for more than two, three years without judgment. And then if you look at their health condition, some of them sleep in the gutters. Some of them sleep even in open air during the the, 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 the rainy season. So I tell you that, whereas I think that prison is supposed to be a place where they take you there, when they keep, like the young youths, they make, get them indulged in uh, petty activities, recycling activities, maybe um, sewing, maybe other things. If our country was really working well, uh, prison would not be a place where they would take a youth and then just kept there and then expect him to die. They would have maybe to uh, uh, create sub centers in the prison which would uh, train the youth in different traits. What's the link between those poor detention conditions and the uh, population, the inmate population in the prisons of Cameroon which uh, is said to be far above the capacity of the detention centers? Let me tell you something. If you look at uh, the first national vice president of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, Mr. Mamadou Mota, still been in prison one year six months after the presidential decree of uh, 4th of october 2019 is simply because detainees of the anglophone crisis launched a protest in the prison uh, uh, that's contesting the, the conditions of uh, detention or the condition of lodging in the prison which if you take then the statistics at that time the prison that a prison like the Konigi Center prison that is uh, was constructed for about 2,800 inmates, the population was already six to seven thousand. You can imagine, meaning that a room that is supposed to accommodate about ten prisoners would go up to 32 prisoners. I take a room like where I was found in uh, quarter three. We were about 31 of us in the in the room. You can imagine it. So you find that in a space of one meter, about uh, 12 people will be sleeping down, lying prostrate on the floor, and then a lot of heat. So you find that in quarter eight and nine, which I'm telling you, it's only after the, the mutiny in the central prison that the Minister of Justice decided to decongest the prison. But then it's not done because as some of them were transferred to remote prisons, you find that let, just a few months later, many other arrests were done outside. And you know the procedure, the, the, the judicial process of our nation. They first of all arrest you, dump you in the prison before they do uh, uh, inquiries, investigations. So many will be there, maybe six months, one year, uh, uh, one year, 
eight months, one year, um, uh, six months. Because at the military court, especially most of the case which, cases which are judged at the military court, you find that there is, they are waiting trial, they drop you there, they renew it once and then twice. So you see, the population in a guise, the, uh, maybe I can, like, how can I call it, they, uh, they, they fool, they deceive the people that the prison is decongested and then just simply because they want to satisfy the people, you find that the other new prisoners or maybe new um, uh, criminals that are caught outside they are still done in the prison and then no suspects who are suspects called like we may call them you see the process of judging people in cameroon is so slow and why because there is corruption you see the, a, a judge has to sign uh, and then you are dropped in prison if you go there to, to renew uh, uh, maybe to ask for judgment to be done, they will ask you, okay, uh, if this is not given maybe a amount of money, an amount of money, they need to to prolong your stay in the prison. As they uh, keep on prolonging your stay in prison, that is how money is circulating. That is exactly how what happens in the Koningi Center prison. All right. Did you have some people testifying to what you're saying now, or have you experienced it yourself with some of the judges or things like that? Uh, if you ask me, do I have some people who can testify about what is going on, what I have just said now, I can attest to you that the case of Jules of Metrinkam that was in prison for more than nine years happened with a lot of adjournments in the prison simply because they wanted money to flow, to circulate. Since money could not circulate, he was kept there. Jules of Metrinkam was only released after the presence of the CRM militants in the prison because most of our militants in the prison had to constitute a former file, help him constitute a former file and use our party lawyers like Metro Sim and other uh, members of the CRM legal department. It's true the CRM that we found that Jules Omen Trinkham was released in prison. And even some who were uh, uh, released by the courts in the, in, in, in the courts in Cameroon that were still in prison. Because don't forget in the Koninga Center prison, there are times that you have been released by the court duly released and then in the prison there are certain constraints maybe your file is at the level of the administration they want you to maybe pay fifteen thousand francs ten thousand francs and then at times it happens even in the court itself you are released duly by the judge you find that the the court registrars will need a token for you from you before the final file is sent to the prison so somebody might be released in the court, you find that he would have to spend m more than a month in the prison just because of 10,000 francs, 5,000 francs, or even a bottle of drink. Right. Let's go to Idabato, the Bakasi Peninsula. That's an area that Cameroon obtained uh, after a struggle with neighboring Nigeria that went up to the international level and uh, Cameroon obtained uh, authority over the Bakasi Peninsula, and now the peninsula is facing serious underdevelopment challenges. Idabatu, for example, has many underdevelopment challenges, no portable water supply, for example. What's your take on this? Mr. Babula Jonathan, it's all voiced down to the causes of the Anglophone crisis. Remember, the Anglophone crisis packed out as a result of uh, grievances that were tabled by the English speaking people. With regards to the poor condition of roads in the northwest and southwest region, I remember that is where the Coffin Revolution of Mancho BBC uh, came up. And uh, heavy uh, militarization was done, and then after that, the lawyers took it up, there was brutalization. Now, look at a da battle. After so many Cameroonians, soldiers lost their life at the Bakasi Peninsula, I can remember that the Bakasi case was managed by. His Excellency Professor Maurice Camto. That is the person that has been fought since 2018. And with his diplomacy and in collaboration with other people, Cameroon won that case. We expected that so many years later, the Idabato, Bakasi Peninsula, would have been developed because it's one of the places that is highly endowed with natural resources, oil. There are companies there, I think Adax Petroleum is there. There are other companies there. They are extracting oil every day. But if you look at the place, it is one of the poorest uh, 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 underdeveloped places of the nation. Now, we ask our que uh, this question, what is the Cameroon government's stance on that? 
It's simply the same thing that is happening in most other parts of the nation. They are out to eat, get fat, and they care less about what is happening to the common man. Mm, but that can be attributed to the unstable security situation burning in the two English-speaking regions of the, uh, the, the country, the underdevelopment challenges. We even have about three government institutions that have been uh, swallowed up by the sea. The lone primary school of the area, uh, the secondary school, and another government institution swallowed up by the sea. Uh, are they not difficulties that can justify the fact that uh, the place is, should, can be facing some of these challenges given the fact that it is away from the urban centers or the blue zones as they say. Mr. Babala Jonathan, when I think of my uh, subdivision of origin Batibo that I'm from, I know most of the villages there are now covered with grass because of the war going on in the northwest and southwest region of Cameroon. It could be one of the reasons why you see uh, Idabato still being underdeveloped. But our military men, the uniform men tell us that they are doing an impeccable job in the two English-speaking uh, regions to ensure uh, stability, um, unless they are deceiving us. Because if the military, the uniform men, the police officer and all like can manage the situation in the northwest and southwest region, then developing Idabato cannot be a problem to people who are experts in managing crisis. But like I said, the case of Idabato is just a, a, a tip of the iceberg of what is happening in Cameroon. Take the case of Yabasi. If you go to uh, the, 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 the northern regions of Cameroon, you find where our children school. Most of them attend lessons under mango trees. Let us ask ourselves, is it because of the Boko Haram insurgents, if it's because of the Boko Haram insurgents, they are telling us that Boko Haram has been neutralized. neutralized. Why is it that they cannot construct better institutions in the northern regions, schools? So like I told you, we have a system in which it's a laissez-faire system, and that laissez-faire system favorizes, uh, 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 it, 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 favor, it, it favors the the, the, the mismanagement of, of funds, you see the extortion of funds, funds that are channeled for the construction of major infrastructures in the nation. You find some of them, they uh, siphon the funds and then maybe they construct substandard infrastructures that will not remain for long because you are talking of public buildings. You need to go and evaluate the material in which those public structures were constructed in a da battle. A bag of uh, 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 cement that maybe is supposed to produce, let's say, just about 50 uh, uh, bricks. Sometimes you see it is used to produce about 100 to 150 bricks because money has to enter into private pockets. <laughs> there are no people to go there to evaluate. You find that when those structures are mounted, they would not. Uh, sustained the number of years which they were meant to, 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 to hold. Our time is up. Mutaga Silvanus Tifu, Special Advisor, Cameroon Renaissance Movement. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Permit me use this opportunity to say kudos to Professor Alain Fogoy, one of those politicians that has remained taught in Cameroon politics since 2018. He refuses to be corrupted by the regime in place. And special greetings to His Excellency Professor Maurice Camto. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. That's it for today. Kinoxwa is up next.